The Bobject is getting nerfed, and next week we will be testing it out on the common test. This update will be hitting in early September, just in time for Onslaught. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I pulled 72% win rate in over 6,000 battles, and how you can pull even better win rates with one simple trick. I'm also going to tell you about the competition I'm running in my community, where at the end of the year, you'll be able to win loot boxes from Wargaming's Christmas event. Last year I spent around £240 on prizes for the competition. This year it's probably going to be around the same. There'll be more details about this competition at the end of the video. The Bobjax currently has the highest win rates of all of the tier 10 tech tree tanks. But did you know that the Bobjax has received some of the biggest nerfs in the game already? Let's go into the past to see how the Bobjax used to be. The Object 268 version 4 is a new tier 10 vehicle. It's a vehicle with excellent front armor and a gun that inflicts 650 damage per shot. Its gameplay is similar to its predecessors in the branch, an assault TD for playing at close and medium range. When the Bobjax was first released, the gun handling was amazing, at less than 2 seconds of aim time and a really nice dispersion on the move stats. It also came in with a 1500 horsepower engine, which gave it 20 horsepower per ton. This is more than the Bobjax 140, the Soviet medium tank, which only had 17 horsepower per ton. The Bobjax also came in with 55 km power top forward speed and 22 km power top reverse speed, and also had 2100 hit points to start with. This tank was an absolute monster on the battlefield, and 4 months later, after it was released. Wargaming gave this tank some of the biggest nerfs I have ever seen. That's why we increased its aiming time and increased the dispersion caused by movement and turret rotation. The vehicle's protection was weakened, the durability was reduced, the armor became thinner in the vulnerable spots of the front projection. Now they can be penetrated more often by tier 8 and 9 vehicles. From the moment it was introduced up to now, the object could keep up with medium tanks and compete with them for good positions from the start of a battle. With update 1.0.2, its engine will lose a portion of its power. Its forward and reverse speeds will decrease, same for the hull turning speed. Now the object will not compete with MTs. It's still mobile enough to quickly move across the map and engage enemies in places where it's needed most. And this was the Bobjax for two whole years. It had very slow traverse speed and very long aim time, and it could easily be counted with a single shot to the tracks. In August 2020, with update 1.10, Wargaming introduces Equipment 2.0. World of Tanks is on the verge of releasing large changes to the equipment system. The main change is the addition of brand new types of equipment. The turbocharger is one example. It increases the engine power, as well as the top speed and reverse speed. Which restores most of the Bobjack's mobility. It also introduces hardening, but by itself it's not enough to prevent the tracks from being taken out in one shot. The most important update comes one year later, with the introduction of bond hardening, bond turbo, and most importantly, field modifications. Testing of field modification on the Sandbox server has ended. A number of balance changes were implemented as a result. Now the feature is ready to go live on the main servers. The level 2 modification for the Bobjax is completely busted. You have a choice between having additional suspension durability and maintaining speed, or increasing your traverse speed. The problem is that the additional maintaining speed actually improves your effective traverse speed more than the latter option. This means that you are effectively just buffing the Bobjax with better acceleration, traverse, and track health. The bonus of track health also stacks with hardening, allowing them to tank shells from high caliber guns. It is here that I decided to remove the rammer from my setup and start playing with the first build that I would recommend to you. The equipment that I used for this build are Bonter bond hardening and bond configuration. Now you are truly unstoppable.
And to be honest, you don't even need the config for the extra track repair speed. Most of the top players will opt for the gun rammer instead, and that is absolutely fine. The rammer is staying in there. How about I take off my rammer control and put it inside of your... You know what I'm saying? The most important parts are the hardening and the turbo, but as you can see, platooning together really helps to boost your win rate. It gets better, because at the start of 2023, Wargaming has released experimental equipment. With tier 3 experimental hardening, tier 3 experimental turbo, and bounty rotation mechanism, your gun handles better than when the Bobjax was first released. Your effective traverse speed is also 37% better than the original release Bobjax. With this loadout, your tracks can still absorb up to 490 alpha guns without getting destroyed. Your tracks will also still repair faster than any single fire gun it will meet. Your engine will still get a boost to its health, allowing you to keep your removed speed governor on for the whole battle. Medium tanks will no longer be able to get around you thanks to your amazing traverse speed, and your gun handling will allow you to keep wiggling your weak spots and spend minimal time stationary to aim. I used this loadout in the latest onslaught Crimson Griffin event, and it took me 113 battles to reach legend. This tank is so toxic, honestly. To summarize the two loadouts I would recommend playing with on this tank, if you just want to go full YOLO and go for big ramming damage, go for the survivability mobility build. Bond hardening gives you the massive increase to your track health, it also brings your tracks to full health when it automatically repairs. Bond configuration is for the massive decrease in track repair time. This also increases your engine health and prevents your tank from being set on fire. This is important because the biggest weak spot on your front is where both your engine and your fuel tanks are sitting. This also allows you to run the removed speed governor without ever needing to turn it off. And finally, take the bond turbo for the massive increase in mobility. As for the field modifications, take the following. Reinforced suspension is broken right now. Definitely take this option as it just buffs your track health massively. Your acceleration and effective traverse speed is also increased. For the next one, take parallax adjustment. The smaller aim circle has a larger impact on the performance on this vehicle. Next, take the right angle periscope as the additional camouflage doesn't really help at all. For level 7, you have a tough choice on whether you want to protect your crew or not. I usually drop the med kits for the removed speed governor and only take the med kits if there are two or more arty on the enemy team. As you can guess, losing your crew members is a real concern when playing without a medkit, but there are certain things you can do to mitigate this. Let's have a quick look at the tank. Enemies are always going to target your lower plate, upper plate, and cupola. Your crew, however, are all sitting behind the superstructure of this vehicle. This means that if you're able to keep your front to the enemy, the only crew member that is under threat is the commander, as his head is sitting inside of the cupola. But as this setup sacrifices traverse speed for more survivability, I would personally recommend taking the crew health here. For the final field modification, you have the option of faster track repair speed and more engine power, or faster reverse speed. This is down to your preference. Both options feel really nice to play with. You could even play with neither option selected, personally. Since this is sort of a meme build, I would go with the extra track repair speed, just to bring it down to 2.29 seconds. Keep in mind that the config directive does cost bonds, so keep an eye out for when you run out of them. If you really want to, you can buy them in bundles of 100 for 540 bonds. The second build I would recommend for you is the mobility gun handling build. I would recommend this build to higher skilled players, as this build is less forgiving. You get a lot more tank traverse speed, and your gun handling is significantly better. This allows you to prevent medium tanks from circling you, and allows you to spend less time stationary when aiming in your shots. The tier 3 survival improvement suit gives you enough track health to tank shots from around 490 alpha guns. The tier 3 mobility improvement system paired with bounty rotation mechanism gives you a bonus of 21% dispersion reduction during vehicle movements and traverse, as well as a bonus of 21% to your hull traverse speed. At the time of recording, Wargaming has released the bond rotation mechanism, or as they call it, the improved final drive. This is a fitting name, as it can be the improved final drive for the Bobjects. I am looking forward to testing this out. For the directive, it's a tough choice between clutch braking and smooth ride. Both only cost 10,000 credits each, so you don't need to worry about running out. I would recommend trying both of these out, and then deciding your personal preference. For the field mods, I would only switch the level 7 to reduce your reload time. With the extra traverse speed, I feel more confidence in keeping my front to the enemy to protect my crew. I hit V4s with a bash in my base. I cannot stand the V4s. It's fine, I'm gonna die. 
Bob Jacked, fellas, in your face. Watch this. Whole Travers, this tank will turn a bit uh, faster, but you know what? Rip 10 kilometers per hour speed. Instead of 50, you will go 40. Specific power to weight ratio is significantly lower. Hit points nerfed. Render range finder cover from 230 millimeters to 210 millimeters you know what that means that means it's easier to penetrate this tank the tank has less hit points the tank is slower bobject is getting nerfed again how about this what is your reaction about the bobject fellas what is your reaction about the bobject huh Good! Finally! Good! Nice, disgusting! I love it! Good! Okay, okay, well deserved, well deserved. 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 Fuck the V4, dude. Fuck. Deserved, chat. Don't even start, dude. Deserved. 100% deserved. 1 million percent deserved, dude. 1 million percent deserves. Dude, I am so glad that Control is getting fucked up the ass. <laughs> no longer will he be driving around with his stupid V4 yoloing into people, dude. Thank God, dude. The biggest impacts of these nerfs is that you can no longer get to stupid early positions. I'm gonna have to rethink my strategies on a lot of maps. The nerf to the engine power will hurt a lot, but honestly it's not too bad. The effective traverse speed will increase by 10 to 15%. The nerf to the hit points really aren't that impactful at all, and the Capula nerf isn't actually that bad either. There's still a lot of things that are really broken about this tank, even after the nerfs. If you use the turbo, the mobility is still good enough to play on either the heavy or the medium flank. And because you get matched up against other tank destroyers, often you'll be facing off against Grill 15s or SDRVs. This means you can still influence the battle massively with high impact gameplay. The armor of the V4 is still insane, and the increase in the traverse speed will only help you wiggle the weak spots even harder. You will still have the insane penetration values to deal with the heavy tanks, and insane traverse speed to deal with mediums. This nerf is coming in time for the next onslaught, and I'm really looking forward to testing the changes in the common test. Fingers crossed I really hope we can get to Legend only playing the V4 again. I mentioned at the start of the video about doing a giveaway. Everyone has a chance to win Christmas loot boxes at the end of the year. The prizes are given to the strongest champions in my community. Join our Discord using the link in our description and check out the challenges in our Hall of Fame. The first challenge, achieve the ramming record. Your ram needs to be in one smooth motion and you must maintain contact with the ground, so no cliff diving. The second challenge is to get the fastest win at tier 10. Your team must destroy all enemy vehicles and only those in the top three by XP have the right to claim championship. Capping does not count. The final challenge is to do the highest damage as a platoon. To participate in any of these challenges, you just have to send me your replay where you broke a current record. This has to be from a current patch so that I could review this before rewarding you with your title. The most important thing in this game is that we're all playing together and having fun. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on the battlefield. What's up, Control? I got a Pepe loser for Control. His only, his one tank is getting on, dude. He's gonna have to, uh... He's gonna have to, uh, I don't know, figure out a new shtick. How does it feel, Control? Huh? If you would like to see more, follow Control. He is uh, the father of the Object 268 holding W. So... You know, I like Control as a guy, but his triple V4 shit? Kind of annoying. Can I say that? Well, that was Control? Oh my god. I literally lost the control. I need to warm up, okay? Listen. As much as I love you, control, I don't want to be the guy that has to play against you, so... If I can avoid you, I will. I will. Yo, control! Control, you actually fucking YOLO'd me in the Himmel store today. You actually YOLO'd me in Himmel. Bro, I actually, I, I nearly fucking rage quit it. I actually, I was like, yeah, cool. Okay, I'm gonna just, you know, I'm gonna just, uh, get by. <laughs> I, I was so close of all the pouring, dude. <laughs>